coming out pretty fast, and I don't know where it's going to stop. But I also firmly believe that real wealth is built in downturns. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today on Raising Private Money has already raised $2 million of private money. Well, he's been an active real estate investor actually 16 years. for over... Now, he formed this podcast called the Limited Partner Podcast. Originally, it was formed to share this 16-year shortcut to get all the advantages of real estate and private equity and without having to become, you know, like a hands-on active investor. Well, it started out just as a podcast, but it has grown past that. In this current state uh, of the market that we've got going on, there's a lot of people that are looking for something tangible, you know, something more. Well, the Limited Partner Podcast has quickly turned into this daily conversation about how to get started as a passive investor, uh, or if you've made investments before, how you can reduce your risk. So if you are looking for a different conversation about building wealth, then the Limited Partner Podcast is the place to be. And here's why. You see, 90% of the world's millionaires, they've made their millionaires in real estate, but here's the secret sauce. 0% of the world's billionaires, that starts with a B, actively manage real estate themselves. They have figured out where to find these opportunities to invest in real estate passively. So, after this short message, you are about to meet my good friend and my guest, Mr. Jake Wiley, right after this. Well, Jake, tell us uh, more details about exactly what is the limited partner? Well, the, the limited partner is is, an, is a word that you probably heard floated around there. Maybe if, if you're an experienced investor, you know exactly what it is. Maybe if you're just getting into it, maybe you've heard it in conversations before. But the limited partner is, is truly a passive investor. And really the way the rules work is that there's a general partner. You might have heard of them as a sponsor. They are active. They're hands-on. They're managing the property. They're managing the investment. As a limited partner, you're on the back end, you're providing basically money into the deal. You have equity, you have upside, and you have returns that are coming back to you, but you have zero obligation to actually manage that property. And, you know, really the, it reduces your risk in terms of what you're getting yourself into. Well, Jake, you've got a lot of experience here in this world, and I really have two different audiences that are tuning in right now. Part of the audience uh, are real estate investors looking to raise private money or more private money for the deals. The other part of my audience are people that would just love a way to be involved in real estate investing, but they want to be passive and not have to go out and negotiate deals and find deals and thus and so. Well, you've done both. You've been an active hands-on operator uh, investing in single family houses in five different states. Um, and You've also, you know, now have experience in, in syndication. I want, I want the, I want both audiences to hear your story and what lessons have you learned from your story? Yeah, I, I'd love to tell my story and it goes all the way back to, let's call it 2006 it was when I first got into real estate investing. Um, like many of you out there, I read the purple book, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it lit a fire. It was an opportunity to say, I can do this. And at the time, I was a CPA. I was making really good money. Had income coming in. The banks loved me. They would be able to give me, you know, they were all about giving me loans at that point in time. You can go buy as many houses as you want. Remember, this is pre-subprime crisis. So money was, money was easy. And the ability to go out and, and purchase a property, you know, then take the money and the, the BRR strategy before that even existed, you know, and just keep going. And that was, that was my model. And I left my job as a CPA to become a full-time real estate investor. 
So this is right around the 2008 time frame. So you can tell where this story is going. And I was I was actually pretty excited because if you think about the history and, you know, Warren Buffett and all these folks have said when there's blood in the streets, that's the time to buy. And boy, there was blood in the streets. So 2008, 2009 was a great time to buy real estate. And it was just you go out there, you find a good deal. You've got the contractors and everybody that are in your pocket ready to go. You put the deal together and then you just go do another one. And really where the story gets interesting for raising private money is that right around 2009, 2010 timeframe, you know, the, the government, so Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they were just back there gobbling up all the loans, right? If you qualified and it pencil, they would they'd buy your loans. I called my bank one day and he said, oh, they just changed the rules. You know, now you're limited to four, you know, you can, you can have four loans out that Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac will buy with your social security number. And I had like six. Thankfully, they didn't make me sell the other ones. But effectively, they said, hey, your business model today is, is cut off. It's over. So you've got to start from scratch. And, you know, I'm scratching my head. I left my job and I was still in the early phases. I mean, great track record. Things were looking promising. But again, this was 2008, 2009, 2010. Like the economy wasn't in a great place. So it was a little bit scary. And, you know, for me, it turned out to be a blessing. And I'll never go back and say, man, I wish I had done things differently because it forced me to raise private capital. I had deals in the pipeline. I had to get them funded. I'd been out in the marketplace. I'd built a brand around myself. I was in New Orleans at the time. And, you know, people knew me. I was at every single one of the investors, uh, real estate investors association meetings. I had a little tent, you know, back there showing all the deals we we're working on. And I just built this, you know, positive brand and people were excited about like, hey, you know, what are you doing this week? And, you know, leveraging that, I was able to roll that into raising private money. And it was scary at first. I'll tell you, like to go to somebody and say like, man, this market's crazy. The bank used to just give us money. And now they're not doing that. Now I'm raising private capital. But it was the only way that we would eat <laughs> a young family. Um, you know, my wife and I, you know, been married only a couple years at this point in time, and it was scary, but that forced me one, they cut my money supply off and two, like I had to eat. So I was out there, you know, shaking hands, coffees, breakfast, lunch, wasn't really affording dinners at that point in time, but raising money to buy real estate. So I did, and it worked. And I tell you, sometimes it, it takes a situation like that where you really have to be forced to do it to get out of your comfort zone. So for, for those of you that are out there listening that are thinking about raising money or you want to raise money and you're nervous or you don't know how to ask, like, I don't know, we're, we're going into an interesting cycle now. You might, you might get the benefit that I have where you had no choice. But, you know, fast forward a couple of years, it was continuing to grow. And through the, through the recession, the great recession back there, you know, my model changed from kind of buy and hold and the long-term wealth strategy of like buy a house, hold it. The market was coming back. And every house that I bought, you know, like it was basically almost equity in my pocket the day I bought it because it was just inching back. So renovating and putting a little bit of love and, and my niche was always a little bit of a green, right? We did foam insulation before foam insulation was cool. We looked at solar, we did windows and that was always the market, right? And we were bringing it back and we we're saying, hey, look, we're in a marketplace where people are flipping homes, you know, left and right. And, and remember, I just said I was in New Orleans. This is four years past Katrina where literally everybody was flipping houses in New Orleans because they were rebuilding. And our quality and our product was just different. You know, the, the average home bill, power bill in New Orleans at that time was like $400, even for a small house, because you basically turn your air conditioner on and you just blew right through the floor. And we changed all that. So we built this model and we were flipping houses and, you know, we were growing, but we were also, every once in a while, we find a good gem that we'd pull in and say, okay, we're going to hold on to that. And we were flipping houses and I had, you know, properties. And I think at one point in time, we had five different states, you know, 11 properties they were renting, a bunch of properties they were renovating. And I tell you that like my stress levels just kept going up and up. And it wasn't about raising the money because I think we built, you know, a good track record and it was always consistent. And honestly, like the more we did and the less I actually had to raise, which some of you out there are probably like, you should have leveraged everything. But at the end of the day, when you're running onesie twosie properties, like you are the man. You, you've got people will tell you all day long that like you find a great property manager and it's hands off. It's never hands off. Things don't break at an opportune time. You know, the, the air conditioner only goes out when it's 100 degrees, right? 
and you can't wait five days for you know the property manager to maybe get their handyman to go out there and see like you've got to take action you got to be there the roof only leaks in a monsoon you got to take action to protect your property pipes break appliances break you got to be there and ultimately i was running myself ragged and we canceled i don't know how many vacations like Anytime I thought we could get away, we'd try and sneak away, boom, phone would ring, and I'd have to be right back there dealing with something, putting out fires. And it was really, really hard. And, you know, I did this for 15 years and it was, you know, it was wearing on me. And again, like I'm, I'm in this world also um, where I've, I've raised large amounts of money, but I'm looking at the billionaires and I'm like, what are they doing? Because they've got portfolios and now you see single family portfolios and like hundreds of thousands of homes. Like, they have all these portfolios. I know they're not dealing with this. I know they're not pulling their hair out. I know they're not missing vacations. I know because they're on the front cover of the magazines going to really cool places. And it turns out that there's this other world of syndications <laughs> where, you know, once you, and for the most part, like th this is where it gets interesting is that, you know, you need to be an accredited investor to, to jump into syndications. That's not a hundred percent of the truth. Like there are ways through that, um, but it, it gets more difficult. But the point is, if you are a high income earner, and you're thinking about, well, how do I increase my wealth? How do I retire early? How do I take care of things? How do I put something into something that's tangible? Jay, like you mentioned at the top of the show, real estate is the place. And that is an area where I think that we want to be, most of us want to be, obviously, if you're here, you want to be in real estate. But there is a myth that like when you invest in a property that it's passive, it's not passive. At the end of the day, you know, for me, I found that I was always out there, the one that was on call when things were going wrong. And when you flip over into becoming a true passive investor, like we talked about, what is the limited partner? You're finding a sponsor or a general partner that is professional. This is all they do. This is their life. They invest in larger properties where there's economies of scale and property management, like multifamily, self-storage, industrial, even retail is coming back now. An office, which is which is a little bit taboo in this current market, but that used to be the gold standard. They invest in those. They know how to operate them. Their property management costs are so much lower. Their ability to turn and buy things at quantity, like it's all right there. I was able to find returns that were coming back to me that were the same or better if I was renting my own property out and all I was doing is writing a check. And that's the magic. And that's where the limited partner came from, is that I don't want those of you that are out there listening that are thinking, I don't really have a lot of time. I'm investing in real estate because I want to free up more time. I want to be more available for my family. I want to take advantage of this. I want you to think about maybe being a passive investor and, and working with and trying to find some limited partner or sponsors that become a limited partner with. Jay, I hope that answered some of the questions that you asked. Well, I'm so glad you told your story, Jake, because your story is my story. And here's what I mean by that. Um, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we started investing in real estate, single family houses full time in 2003. And from 2003 until January, 2009, all I knew to do was go to the local bank and borrow the money to, um, you know, I had, I had a line of credit. Um, I mean, even pr like when I started out in 2003, four and five, I had unsecured, unsecured lines of credit. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I mean, back then, if you could fog a mirror, they, you know, give you a line of credit as long as you had a decent credit score. And, um, but when you were telling your story about calling up um, your lender and finding out that, um, okay, now you're limited to four deals at one time. Uh, Jake, I called up my banker in January, 2009, and I had two deals under contract, single family houses representing over a hundred thousand dollars in profit that I was going to make on those two deals. Well, I wasn't limited to four. I found I, I had nothing. I mean, it was like gone, you know, it's like the global financial crisis was going on. I didn't know we had a financial crisis going on until now I got a crisis, right? And so like you, I was forced. It was a necessity. I mean, I could quit. That was one choice, but it wasn't a choice for me. So I, I was forced into finding a better way and a quicker way to fund my deals and to put me in control, much more control of my business than Mr. Banker being in control. I mean, I found out real quick who was in control of my business. 
the way my business model was set up at the time. Well, Jake, my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. And so in less than two weeks of losing my line of credit at the bank, I was introduced to this world of private money. And I'm not talking hard money. I've got some great friends that are hard money lenders, hard money brokers. I'm not talking hard money. I'm talking doing business with individuals, human beings, just like us, that invest their investment capital and or their retirement funds. Hello. Over half of my private lenders are using their retirement funds to earn either tax deferred or tax free, depending on what type of retirement fund they've got per year by investing, uh, you know, in our real estate, uh, in our real estate deals. So Jake, right now, I want to, before we wrap up the conversation of talking to real estate investors that want to raise private money, in just a second, I want to move to people that want to be passive. But if you want to raise a lot of private money quickly and you make the rules and let me teach you how to do it without asking anybody for money. I just recently wrote my new guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. If you want to raise private money, you can download this for free. Get on the fast track to private money at jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Again, that's jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide, which will show you how to raise private money for your deals. Now, Jake, let's switch the conversation and, and talk specifically to people that are interested in being passive, like the billionaires that starts with a B. So first of all, what would you say the risks are? Like when someone's looking to be a passive private lender investor, um, what should they be, what should they be careful about? Right? Well, I think the first thing that you need to know is that it it's not completely hands off and it's not completely passive. In the beginning, there is work. And the risk is most of us are used to the message of like you go to work at a company, they're going like, hey, we've got a 401k, we've got a match, put your money into it. And by the way, like here's the guy that you talk to, right? Like that's that's how we're trained. And that whoever we're talking to that's represented by the company or the mutual fund or whatever is going to put your money in whatever they think is best for you and possibly what's even best for them. But that's a story for a different day. But the point is, is that it's really like, okay, like I made that money and it's, it's now over there and it's in good hands, I think. Right. And then if you watch the stock market, you realize maybe it's not in good hands. So the transition from investing like that, right. Just taking your 401k, having the money coming out of your, your paycheck, going somewhere and investing in for the last decade, if, if if you started investing in the last decade or investing in, in 401, like you, you think you're probably a genius and this isn't very hard. It's been a, a very long cycle. We're, we're going through a correction now. The risk is that you choose the wrong partner to work with, right? So I like on the show, we focus on three things. I call it the MSA model. So that's the market. There's the sponsor. And then there's the asset class. And I think of those, the sponsor is the most important. But I think, you know, the other two angles are the, the other legs of the, the stool, right? You, you can't sit up without all three. But finding the right sponsor to work with, somebody that understands, one, the market that they're in, what's happening, have they been through a cycle? If they haven't been through a cycle, do they have a mentor or somebody on their advisory team that has? What's the plan? Because frankly, a lot of people have started in this business. A lot of people have jumped into the syndication business in the past, call it five to eight years, because there's a lot of money to be made. And a lot of people did, right? And the, the rising tide rose a lot of boats. Now we're in a place where, you know, the tide's going out and it's going out pretty fast. And I don't know where it's going to stop. But I also firmly believe that real wealth is built in downturns. That's where real wealth is built. When you buy the assets and then you get to basically either, you know, put some blood, sweat and tears into them and then, you know, prove it and then ride the tide back up or you just ride the tide back up. But you got to know how to buy it. You got to have a plan. And, you know, one of the things that's, that's a big issue right now is, you know, Jay, you and I were just talking about is debt. 
the debt markets for commercial deals are a mess. Like the commercial banks don't know what to do. The federal government's kind of stepping over their shoulder saying like, hey, we don't want to see too much of this. We're not buying a lot of that. I read the mortgage banking associations thinking that lending next year or 2023, so this year is going to be down by 15% of what it was before. 34% of the deals that are out there in the market are, are coming due in the next two years in terms of their debt structure, because a lot of these commercial deals have bridge loans, which are only three years. You got to have a sponsor that knows how to navigate all of those things and de-risks that. So there is a lot of homework and it's, it's very similar. I liken it back to the conversations we were having before about raising private money. You got to do a lot of, you know, handshaking. You got to do a lot of coffees, a lot of dinners, a lot of lunches, but now you're on the other side, right? You're listening, but you got to get in there and you got to probe and you got to ask your questions because once you write your check, that money is in there five, seven, maybe even 10 years. It's illiquid. It's very hard to get it out. And if you want to get it out, you're going to pay a price for that. It's not going to be in your benefit if you need to get that check out. So the first thing you need to do is start figuring out like, well, you know, you, you can Google search and there's all kinds of data on which markets are out there. There's resources, there's guides that show which markets are improving. You can get some basic comfort there. There's resources that talk about which asset classes are doing well. Industrial's doing phenomenal right now. Multifamily has been doing really good, but I think there's some bumps in the road. Office, as you can imagine, 30% of the offices that are out there are no longer being occupied. That's going to be a big problem, and I think that's going to be a cliff. So pick an asset, but really spend your time finding a sponsor. And you got to get in there. And Jay, th this will be a good conversation for us to have too, is that when you're raising private money, which is basically the other side of the coin, how do you know that you're working with the right person? How do you feel comfortable with that? And you need, as a passive investor, you've got to feel very comfortable with a sponsor and you need to ask all the questions. And the one number one thing that I always hear from sponsors that's so surprising is how few questions people ask. Some people write checks and never ask a question. They attend a webinar, they write a check, and they're like blown away. <laughs> so they're expecting questions and they're actually really surprised and it makes them a little bit nervous if you don't ask questions. So you got to pick your time and that's before you write your check. <clears throat> Jake, um, Describe the person that may be listening uh, or watching this podcast that would be an ideal person that would really want to connect with you and why would they want to connect with you? Well, I think, you know, one, I want you, whoever this ideal person is who I'm about to describe to be successful and I want you to live the life that you, you want. And that's really kind of the journey is, is freeing up time. But if, you, if you're a high earning individual, right, if you're a partner, if you're an accountant, you're a doctor, you know, you're making good money and, you know, you're effectively hourly rate, which you're able to bill out to somebody else versus, you know, what you're taking in for that is relatively high. And you're thinking, hey, you know, look, look, go, look go back to my story. I was plunging toilets. I was standing on roof with like this, you know, that flexi steel stuff that Billy Mays used to sell. Like that's in, the, in today's market, we'll call it $20 an hour work. And I was giving up you know, multiple hundred dollar hour work to do that. So if, if you're like me and you're thinking like, hey, that's not really how I want to spend my time and be really unpredictable, then I think being a passive investor might be the right thing for you. And, and what it does is when you find the right sponsors and you find the right deals, you grow your wealth and you grow it at returns that are a little bit higher than what you're seeing on the open market, generally speaking, all right, caveat, like you never know what's going to happen in the future. But you have an opportunity to grow. You have an opportunity to keep reinvesting this money. There's also 1031 exchanges, which I'm sure, Jay, you've talked about on the show a million times, where you can take your money and keep tax deferred, reinvesting this over and over again. There are all kinds of strategies where you can grow your wealth really quickly in real estate that you don't have on if you're just going to go mess, mess around with the stock market. So if, if you got a good job, everything's good, you're looking at retirement, or you don't want to get your hands dirty, or one, you're just not handy, or you don't want to do all that work, I think being a passive investor might be a great place for you to start. And the way to connect with Jake Wiley is at his website, which is www.thelimitedpartner.com. www.thelimitedpartner.com. Jake, what's your opinion and what's your crystal ball say about our current real estate market that we're in and where are we going? Of course, well, that may, your answer may depend on the asset class you're talking about. 
It, it does. And I think that, you know, if I, if I want to, let's go back to the point that I made earlier is that real wealth is built in downturns. I think that the crystal ball says that there will continue to be some blood in the streets that's coming our way. So be prepared for that. There are a lot of people out there that are just doing deals, you know, similar to Jay, how you and I were, where we were just rocking through the last recession and it's fine. But there's going to be a lot of people that jumped in because look, you know, real estate prices have gone through the roof over the past three years and it's like nuts. And it doesn't no pun mean, intended, I'm yeah. sure. No pun yeah. intended, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been nuts and it doesn't make any sense and it's going to adjust and it's going to correct. But I think that when you're looking, my crystal ball says is that there will be a lot of really, really good deals that are going to come on the market and they're going to come on and they're going to go through. They're going to be you know, deals that were by very respectable investors that need to clean up their balance sheet. Right. There's there's an accounting piece to this. There's, you know, debt to income ratios and all those things. And they need to clean it up or maybe their their loans not going to renew at rates that they want to. And they just want to move on. Those are going to happen quietly and quickly behind the scenes. Good brokers are going to know the folks that they can call. They can take those deals down. So I'm watching my what I'm looking for is I've got a handful of, of sponsors that I know that are really good in their market. And I'm waiting for them to call me on some of those deals that say, hey, look, this just popped up. We got to take it down. There's no competition in the market right now, but we're going to make it happen. Get your checkbook out. And that's the way it's going to work. It's going to move very, very fast. So I think my crystal ball says is that be patient in this marketplace. Don't just jump in. Or find There's a lot of people that come to me that are just ready to jump in, right? They're thinking like, I'm finally ready. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. This market's nuts. I want to put all my money in tangibility. Be patient, right? There's a little bit of diversification, which said, which is a bit of timing, right? So wait for the right deal. But when the right deal comes, don't him and haul. You got to go. And that's one of the number one lessons I've learned in real estate is that every time I go look at a property, I've got my checkbook in my pocket, right? And if it's the right deal, I'm leaving a deposit on it. I'm letting those people know I'm serious. And I'm picking up the phone on the way home and I'm calling the people I know that can fund that deal. And if you, you one, you want to be on that list, you want to be ready for it. And I think that if one, it, taking it to the other course, if you were a real estate investor or you're raising capital because you want to do single families and you want to do those flips, same thing. Like when you see it and you know it, jump on it. Don't wait. Real estate is cyclical. Yes, there might be a little bit of a dip before it comes back up. But when the right deal comes along, you got to move quick. And that's, you know, the, the bulk of my net worth came from the last recession. And I'm living proof that you can get through it. But I had to be patient. I had to sweat a lot. Um, I grew some gray hairs that I didn't have before. But, you know, life is good. What you just said, Jake, reminds me that one of the traits and characteristics of a successful real estate investor, and I'm talking about an operator, is resiliency. Resilient. I mean, we have the belief quitting is not an option. We're going to figure out a way. My guest today on Raising Private Money is Jake Wiley. Um, connect with Jake at www.thelimitedpartner.com. Jake, thank you so much for taking the time to come join me on the show. Jay, this has been a great conversation. Thank you for trusting me with your audience. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money. I know you don't want to miss out in any more amazing episodes. So if you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and click that bell or tap that bell so you don't miss out. And that's, of course, after subscribing. And I always appreciate you sharing the episodes as well. If you happen to be listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure and follow me so you'll be tuned in on all the upcoming episodes. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. I'm wishing you all the best. Hopefully, this episode is helping you take your investment career to the next level. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash moneyguide. That's jconner.com slash moneyguide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. 
Ah!